Well, work has been progressing on this thing slowly, but it's coming. I'd say I got about 10 hours working on it to get it to this point. Mostly it involves painting these tubes and replacing some bolts, any bolts I find that were bent. And uh, getting it ready to put the Lexan on there. This is the reason why you need to take these bolts out and check them. Any place where if you've had a rough landing or something, you should look at them and see. You can see this bolt is bent right down here on the end. So it needs to be replaced with a new one here. It's a quarter inch bolt, so you know it's it's uh, easy enough to replace. But you don't want to reuse something like that, this bolt that's bent like that, nor try to straighten it. That wouldn't be any good on a bolt. I don't think I'd do that. But it's not too often that I have this uh, this plane in the, in the garage where I can really work on it. So I think I'm going to uh, jack it up and see if I can't take a look at these wheels and brakes and get, the, get that straightened out because that was a big problem. Nobody could solve that, so I think I'll fix that one. But basically it just had a few pop rivets and things I replaced and, uh, like I say, touched up the paint. Uh, normally, if this plane was <clears throat> in the hangar and had the wings on it, I would just lift up one, one wing and have the wife put a jack stand under the plane. Then wing, lift up the other wing and have her put another jack stand under there. So it would be pretty easy to do, but uh, since I don't have any wings on it, I figure I have to lift it from underneath. And so I've made this 2x4. I've, I decided, oh, <clears throat> you know, 24 inches or 26 inches, something like that, would be good to put across that lower axle to lift it by. And I, if I get it up in the air, then I can put a jack stand under there or something to shore it up uh, pretty easily. So that's what this rig's all about here. And I'm just using a bottle jack. I have a floor jack, which probably would be even better, but this was the closest thing to me, so I used that. Now to keep it from rolling off that tube, a saw cut. You'll see here in the end, just a little V-cut in the end of the of the 2x4 just so as it stays centered on this on this axle which is a piece of 4130 steel here so uh, that's how that works and it'll be pretty easy to lift now when I lift it it's only sitting on the tail wheel so it's going to want to rock back and forth so I got to kind of steady it on that jack uh, as I raise it up because it's just going to be the weight's going to be on just two points, the jack and the tail wheel. So I'll just kind of steady, steady with my hands and see if I can't get something under there to block that wheel up off the ground. Or I could work on it just one wheel at a time. I could do that too. The first thing I noticed that they got wrong on this, somebody when they were trying to fix this put the wrong size spacers around where this uh, shock cord goes so I need to replace it with the bigger one because obviously it's not going to put enough tension on this it might be they did that because it's kind of hard to get that shock cord in there where this plates on there I'm not sure why anyways uh, I'm gonna see if I can't replace it with a couple of them like this It'd be better uh, now to get the shock cord off, <clears throat> you have to take this, this nut and washer off here. That's what's holding it on there. So you just need a couple of wrenches. Now I can get the washer off and we'll be able to get this spacer off here. That's all there is to that. Somebody asked me the question, how much travel does this swing arm have? Well, 
if you measure right on the tire center line, it goes up three inches. That's how much travel you got. At three inches, it hits the suspension stop up under here, which is really just a hunk of rubber. So I suppose that could be squeezed some, but I would say about three inches is what you have. You have to stretch this looks like five eighths diameter uh, bungee cord from a tailor craft and it's wrapped around there a couple times that's how far you got to stretch it three inches so it's got to hit pretty hard to, to hit that suspension stop this right here that you see in the end of this down tube right here that's the suspension stop that stops this thing from going up too far like I said you got about three inches of travel and this stops this aluminum piece from hitting this steel piece. Now what that is on there is a piece of rubber and that's just a motor mount. It's a little vibration isolator. You can get them from probably auto parts stores. This one I think was made by Lord Corporation. Uh, the only thing is the, the mounts th that I screwed in there are metric thread. It's uh, six millimeter so it's very close to this quarter inch. This is a quarter twenty thread on here. And all I did, it had a stud sticking out of each end of it. It's a rubber block with a stud sticking out each end and they're bonded on there. And they vulcanize the rubber right to that metal washer. And I just took a hacksaw and cut this plate off there. So this screws into an aluminum slug that's in the end of here that this bolt goes through that slug so that when this hits the loads transferred from the rubber into the aluminum slug and into this bottom bolt. The bolt if you took that out this whole work should come out of there or you can unscrew this maybe it's kind of hard to get to in there but if you unscrewed it you could maybe take it off there because it just screws into the aluminum slug but remember it's a metric thread six millimeter metric thread on this one the reason I did that's because that's all I had was metric ones I only had one of these with a quarter 20 but I could see the idea was good one other thing I should tell you here you see this screw where it's all rusty this screw is really just for looks. I put it on there so nobody would question how I put this piece of tool steel, three quarter inch tool steel axle in there. But it's actually Loctited in here. It goes back in about oh six inches or so underneath where those rubber bands are. And uh, it's, it's put in there with Loctite. The only way to get this piece of tool steel out would be to heat this aluminum to 400, 450 degrees, it'll it'll come out of there. In fact, it might even drop out of there. But first, you'd have to take off this screw. This screw is drilled and tapped into the tool steel to make absolutely sure that this can't come out and it can't twist when you put on the brakes. It's just really for looks. I don't think you needed it, but I put it in there anyway so nobody would question what I'm doing since they can't see it. Uh, Anyways, that's what you'd need to do to get these stub axles out of there. Heat this. Then you could put a nut or something on these threads and probably bang it out of there. But my guess is it'll probably fall out of there if you get this hot enough. Right away, I get this apart and I see something wrong immediately once I take the wheel off. For one thing, the wheel bearing fell out of the wheel. They didn't lock tight that in, but it should have been. Then we've got... You see all these aluminum shavings here? They're here and here. It looks to me like the brake drum's been rubbing on this backing plate here for the brakes. So I've got to fix that. It must be there's a spacer or something they don't have right on here. So I got to take that apart. And now that I see all this, I think I better take this uh, backing plate and, and brake shoes off here so that I can examine how they got that fastened on there because it might be they didn't put that together right either. So the other thing I noticed is that these uh, spacers in here where you rub, wrap these rubber bands around 
they've got big ones on one side and small ones on the other side. So I gotta fix that. So this all has to come apart. One of the problems I've got with this plane is the two owners that had it, in the process, a lot of parts got lost. So I've been trying to make remake these parts. Now, here's another one that's just a simple a little uh, bushing that goes inside those rubber bands on the landing gear. It's just made out of plastic and it's made to give a radius for the rubber to go around. But of course, one of them's missing, so I gotta reproduce it. Fortunately, I found the other bit of stock for it, some of the stock that I used the first time.